Hi guys, welcome back. Today we have a little bit bigger project for you. We're going to be making a paracord belt using the cobra weave, or actually a double cobra weave. We'll be following a method that we have outlined on our site in a photo tutorial before. So we'll drop a link in the description for that if you'd like to follow along that way instead. Let's dive in. The length requirements for paracord on this project are going to vary a little bit depending on your waist size. I'm operating off of a 34 inch waist that I'm building this belt for. And so we're going to need about 120 feet of paracord total. Um, breaking that down into our sections, we have about 40 feet of both of our weave colors. I'm making a two color with a black and a camo. So 40 feet of each of those. And then for our core strands that we're going to be weaving around, we have two different cords, both 92 inches. And how we come to that measurement is taking our waist size and multiplying it by two and then adding 24. That extra 24 inches just gives us about an extra foot of belt to wrap around our waist with a little bit of extra room for error as well. And then this little three foot cord over here is just for a retention strap. It's optional, but we'll be adding that at the end to tuck the belt into. The other thing we'll be using today, and you do not need this, but it is our ultimate jig by Jig Pro Shop. So this jig is very helpful for making gun slings and also belts that we're going to be using it for today. So let's get it set up. All right, so we'll begin with our two identical weave pieces. Um, these were both 92 inches for me, but they may differ a little bit for you. Um, find the middle of each of those and make a cow hitch onto the buckle, one on each side of the center pin. Bring it down through the middle like that. And same with the other side. Now on these you want to make sure that your ends are fairly even. I'm a little bit off on one of those. Since these are the core strands, you won't be weaving them at all. We're going to tie those onto the end of our jig. So we're going to start by just looping our buckle over the pin on one end. And then on the other end, we've got a pin as well. Keep all those from getting tangled up. We're just going to be using a binder clip to keep these all in place. And then you can loop that around the pin here. There we go. And then we'll go back to our buckle end to start our weave. Take your matching color of weave cord, one of the 40 foot sections, and we're going to be actually adding a cow hitch onto the middle of this buckle. So find the middle of this cord again. So to do this cow hitch that straddles the pin, we're going to loop it over the pin and then underneath and then put your ends through the loop. And again, it might be a good idea to just double check to make sure your ends are the same length so that you don't run out of cord in the middle of your project. Before you bother tightening those down, we're going to take our last piece of long cord, the other 40 foot section, in this case black, and thread that through all of our cow hitches. So just loosen them all a little bit and feed it right through the middle sideways. A little bit tricky because I got it on my jig already. I probably should have done this first. All right, so now we've got that on the middle. Now we can actually do the actual weaving part. When we start out, it's a little bit difficult because you have so much cord that you have to pull through the holes, but it gets easier as you go on. So make sure all of your cow hitches are pulled down tight with your black cord on the outside. 
I like to do this as the odd chord out um, because this chord is always going to be going over the top. Um, so that'll be a little bit difficult to keep track of later on if you're using the same chord for, for both. So to begin, go ahead and put that black chord over the top, just like in a normal cobra weave. And then this one over that strand, and then around the back to the outside. So nothing different here yet. Cinch that tight. Now you want to do the, the inverse on that same chord, just to complete out that square knot. But again, your black cord went over the top. And pull that one tight. And now do the same thing on this left, left side here. Black over the top. And the camo over that, underneath, and up through the loop. And then inverse of that on that side as well. cinch that tight. So right now we just have two independent cobra weaves next to each other, but here's where we connect them together. You're going to be crossing, I'm going to do right over left, or, well, I just did the opposite of that, left over right, and we'll be switching chords. Now the one that was doing our right side weave is going to do the left side weave, and we'll just do a cobra weave there. Again, black over the top. So now that your two sides are caught up, you're going to cross your center camo strands again. And I let, I'm going to keep the consistent pattern do left over right each time. But you can switch it up each time if you want. If you want a zigzag line, um, this is just going to be parallel lines down the middle. If you take a look at the end result, you'll, you'll see what I mean. And then just keep on doing the same pattern down the length of the entire belt. All right, so if you notice I'm wearing a different shirt now, this is the next day. I am nearly done. I didn't do this all in one sitting. It took me a couple hours yesterday. We've got about a foot left to weave. I just wanted to give a quick update and a couple reminders as you're weaving. As you are doing the weave, be sure to pull your weave up as you go. It'll make it um, nice and tight instead of having gaps. And then one other thing I want to mention at this point is that if you don't like the look of this side of it, you can go for a different look and actually use this as your outside. It looks very much like the Cobra bracelet, just two of them side by side, and it kind of hides those in-between strands. So if you like that better, be sure to start with it the opposite way and do everything upside down of what I tell you. But I like this. Um, I've got the, the parallel lines going down the middle there. And you could also do the zigzag like I mentioned earlier. Let's keep on weaving. All right, so I've actually gone and removed it from the jig to finish off the last little bit here. Left a little bit of cord just to finish off our end. We're going to taper it off, and to do that, it may help to have a fid, um, but you can actually do that by just loosening the last couple of weaves. We'll go ahead and flip it over to the back, or this would be the top if you decide to do it that way. But then we're going to take your core strands and take the inside one of each side, and we're just going to tuck that back into our weave. So to put a fit on it, we'll just have to melt the end and then screw on your fit. After you screw your fit on, you'll go over the first row and then underneath the next two. Then remove your fit and put it on the other inside core strand. Over that first one and then underneath the next two. There we go. Pull both of those down tight. And then you can clip those about a quarter inch from the weave. Then we'll do our meltdown and push those against. Like that. Now we'll flip it back over so our top is facing up. And now these two center 
cords here that were our weave colors before, they're gonna become the core strands of our taper. So set, their, set your black ones aside. We're just gonna do one complete square knot. So, right on top and then left on top. And you can stop there, pull that tight, and then we're just going to do actually the same thing with our black cord right over the top of that. You can cut these off first if you want. I'm just going to do it all in one go here. I'm actually just to make it lay flat, I'm going to do left over the top first. And you can't pull that one super tight or it'll bend on you but then pull that one nice and tight. There, then it sits right inside of each other there. Now we can go ahead and clip all of our ends. Good to do those two first. And then our black ones. And then you can go ahead and cut off the very end. I'm not going to flatten these ones. I'm just going to melt it until they're nice and rounded so that it doesn't catch on clothing. And it's pretty much the end of our belt. We are also going to add a quick retention strap to the, the very top end of the belt here and that's going to be done with fids as well. This one's a little bit harder to do without a fid um, because you can't go back and loosen this end. I suppose if you don't have fids, you could do this as you weave it. Um, just before you pull those loops tight, you can go ahead and, and weave your three-foot cord through. We're going to go ahead and use a fid. I found that the closer you do this to your buckle, the easier it's going to be. Otherwise, if you do your retention strap back here, like I've done in the past, it actually gets in the way of your first belt loop on your pants, oftentimes. So I'm just going to do it on the second loop in. So we'll start by making a cow hitch. We, we have to do it a little bit different way because we can't stick the loop through. So let's see if I can get this right here. So to do that, go ahead and stick your fit up through the bottom of that loop and then right back down through it. You can just leave your fit on there for now, but you want both ends to be pretty much even, just so that you have enough cord left. Stick both ends of your cord through there and pull that down for your cow hitch. Then go ahead and basically do the same thing on the other side. I'll be going in through the, the bottom again. Once you get your first cord through, go ahead and take the fit off and put it on your other end. And go through that same loop. Then you should have two loops right next to each other that are parallel and not crossing over each other. What I will do at this point is stick my belt through there so that I know how big to make this. So I can cinch it down a little bit. You want to go a little bit loose so that once you get your cobra weave on there, it's not going to be too small to fit the, the end through. So now we're just going to do a cobra weave like normal. Starting out the, the top there. So now I'll just snip off those last little bits. There we go. So then this just pushes right through the weave. The middle is loose enough that it shouldn't have a problem poking it through. And and goes through just like an ordinary belt. All the supplies used in this video 
the paracords, the buckle, and the fid can be found in the description. Otherwise, hit the like button to let us know that you like this video and subscribe for more in the future. Thanks for watching.